Hello YouTube, Steve O Trucker here. Welcome to my channel. And I'll first of all start this off with a massive thank you to my recent subscribers and welcome to my channel. It is seriously appreciated, as I always keep on saying it is. Also to all my older subs and original subs. Same goes, you know, welcome and you know, thank you very much. Seriously, you know, it is appreciated. I'm currently trying out my new Sony RX02, something like that, and my DJI as the front camera. Well, where are we? What day is it to start off with? It is Friday, the 6th of September. <laughs> I had to think about that the end I? Um, well, we are nearly at Exeter. We are currently on, what are we on? We're by Exeter Airport, I think. What road are we on again? E30. And we're going to Camelford. We're going to stop off at services quickly, so this will be a very brief little bit. It's going to be a day vlog, probably, I think. Well, what else has happened today? We've started off at Dorchester today. Because we tipped last, late last night, couldn't get any further. And well, what, what a trip to this point. I mean, it's a beautiful road we had to start off. Positive thoughts. We had two very near misses, sadly enough. One with a motorbiker. Well, I can tell this motorbike from the start was a muppet because I was on the wing road around Orchester, on the roundabout, going around the roundabout, and this motorbike was poaching from one of the other lanes. It was going way too quick, and I was committed. I was really was fully committed. There's nothing. He stopped, luckily, but it was like it was, I was prepped emergency brake at this stage. You know, it was like that. You know, that sort of feeling you get as a driver. So I took my turning. Follow the wing road around. He obviously came up behind me and really up my chuff. I didn't notice him initially, but I knew he was back there. So I was aware there's a motorbiker back there. But he completely, absolutely hid himself behind me. And yeah. Then he went for overtake with a blind bend. And uh, of course. Something game around the bend. Yeah. He just made it past. I gave him a quick little flash to go, oi. You know, because this truck does have uh, advanced emergency braking system. I was actually slowing down as well when I saw this. I was like, woo. You know, I need to leave the options open here. <laughs> you know, I tucked myself in as much as I could. And yeah, I'm not going to show you the footage. What. You know, I'm not here to name and shame and precisely. I'll talk about situations like this quite happily. And yeah, and he decided to call me, you know, something that drops off a ship. Or, you know, that holds a ship at sea. <laughs> yeah, I'll leave it down to your imagination. I'm like, the only person who's one of those here is the person who decided to overtake with a blind bend. No matter how quick your motorbike is, I know this because I'm a biker myself. I wouldn't have overtaken in that scenario. I asked myself, look, if I was on, a, no matter what bike I was on, if I was on the, you know, a top of the line sports bike, fully kitted out, I would still think twice about that. Probably never done that move at all, at all. It's not worth it. The other one, and this is probably even a big smacker. We're probably, well, it was probably worse than that. It was that close to being in the serious accident. And this was off a fellow truck driver. And I'm sorry, I'm going to use the word of the type of truck driver he is. And I'm, I do apologise to all other container drivers. I know there's loads of good container drivers out there. But this container jockey down the, oh, was it the A30? From Dorchester to here, along the coast. Let's have a look at looks to get my facts right. Where did we cut it? We, well, I think maybe in the A35 it was on. And if you know the A35, it's mainly a neighbour. There's the odd dual carriage section, but this is quite far down when you've gone past all that. And it was just literal A road, tristy A road. 
and he's been up my chuff for a while. I knew this driver was itching to get past me. I couldn't go any faster if I wanted to. And oh, legally I wouldn't want to because I was doing the speed limit. I was like, well, why should I break the law for that? I can tell he's not a good driver. And it's yet again combat indicators. And then he decided to overtake. It, granted, it was on one of the straighter ish sections. But you could clearly see there was an oncoming car. Even I saw that, I was like, oh, damn. So, you know, I was in 50 50. Either I keep the speed up, hoping that he'll back off and go back in. Which I know by his driving style, mm, so I decided to slow down. That slowing down and coupled with him kicking in the emergency, I mean everything slam on mode in this, saved his neck. I mean he was that close. It, sh it shook the car driver up massively, even he was like going, are you fine to me? Because I was in shock as well. That's how reckless that I've say. Hopefully, I've saved is it his footage. I will be maybe looking at handing that over to local, you know, police or can you hand it to traffic commissioner? I'm too sure, but I may look at aiming at handing it over to the police at the very least. Because I've got his number. I should have his number plate on there and all that. You know. <sighs> And stuff like that lets the team down. Let's get a move on now. Let's, I thought I'd talk about that very briefly. You know, it's, uh, and sadly enough, similar situations happen daily. So if you're a commercial driver, this will be telling you to suck eggs. You know, this is the normal, even as professional drivers have to put up with. And I admit, the Daffy, a Formula One truck, it, it will get there. But it's not Uber, not the world's fastest thing up the hills. But as they would say, it is what it is. And the thing is, drivers like that let the team down. And sadly enough, it sometimes takes an accident, and even not even, and not even that hit. gets through to them. There's a service on this one, no, it isn't. The next one, isn't it? I'm having an eye on getting to services, as I may have said. We're doing 56. And yeah, you know, stuff like that, as a driver, can rub you up the wrong way all day long. You know, <laughs> leaves you a bad taste. And I, I can see why certain groups of drivers get stereotyped. It's not the first time I've been treated like that by a container driver. I know they're under pressure. I've done container work. Trust me, I've done it. You know, I see so many advantages of doing it, but equally, you can be underneath a lot of pressure. And I'm not justifying what he did with saying this. He should be allowing the work to drive him. Yes, do the work to the best of your ability, as safe as you can. You know, get the load there. But not After at the cost of other drivers. Yards, take the exit. Safety Tim, or take the motorway, anything it's else. Time to cruise. Because, you know, the load isn't worth it at the end of the day. You know, human life doesn't get outweighed by the load. No matter who you think they are. And yeah, I mean, it shocks me. That, that, Take the exit. And I had a similar situation the with a skip the driver the other day as well, which I don't want to discuss. It's happened, and you know, it, it, it not embarrassingly, but it, I hate to say it, it's one of those things you have to put up with, and it's part of the stresses of the job. That you got to be able to live with and work with. You know, it does take a toll. But the key thing is, a bit of advice here for any potential drivers, don't let this put you off becoming a, a professional driver, if this is what you're watching the video for. Just, when these things just water underneath the bridge, you know, find an output. You know, I'm using this as a little bit of output at the moment. A, hopefully a proactive output, you know. 
to try and educate people and maybe get drivers like that to think twice you know that driver just needs to think twice what he's doing you know, is he being professional is he being safe I think the services are off this next one aren't they Let's go and check out extra services. I've been there before. Yeah, it's off this one. Really? Well, the Fiat driver didn't want to <laughs> be polite. <laughs> Never mind. I mean, you expect it. Uh, I hate to say this, but you kind of expect it off car drivers. You know, you know, you go after the car drivers. You've got to go like right, that's normal. <laughs> Because I also had to swap, that's, I started there because I noticed that one of my uh, buckets was a little bit loose, so I thought I'll re-secure it. And I think well, it, what caused it was that emergency brake, it was that, because it had shifted uh, a lot of stuff on my whacking. You know, not clever, not clever. And I think it's this white hand, hey, yes it is. Go it's not the best it. around about speed on, but hey, we can't pick him. Well, he can be. I was going to go to the BP, but I might go to the BP to fuel up, but uh, I don't want to take a break there too long, if you know what I mean. So there's no, well, there is technically proper parking there, but if there's a lot of tourists there, they use our parking area, so. It's just not worth going in, in there f just to park up to have a rest. So I'm going to go have myself a coffee, I think. I think I've deserved it this morning. I think I really have. And just chill out a little bit. And what I'll do is probably do a time lapse from Exeter to Camelford. I hope you enjoy it. So I'm going to set my DJ on to its time lapse mode this time and try Take a bit more exit. of the time then lapsing. Take the motorway, it's time to cruise. And yeah, I mean, there's no big major news to say. You know, I really enjoyed Truck Fest, another positive there, I really did. You know, it, it's been amazing and it's something I want to do again. I think it may got the slight bug of doing it. Stay in this one services doesn't feel intuitive, but hey, <laughs> so services in this one. Yes, I know somebody's there. So, yes, again, I do apologize if I've started this daily vlog off with a little bit of a negative start to it. You know, I do apologize, but. I also use my vlogs to, you know, maybe help slightly educate or make people aware, you know, of things that we have as drivers have to put up with daily. It's not common to be engaged with a heavy goods vehicle like that, though. That is a very rare currents oh in comparison to you know what your daily bit you run into after oh. 100 yards go around the roundabout and sadly Fourth we do exit. we have to deal with a you know probably go a situation a day normally Fourth exit. i try to make sure it's none of those i prefer no close or near misses or what would be classed in any other workplace but I'll leave out that, and I'll probably see you after my time lapse. Probably after I loaded at Camelford. Just watching this car here. Plus, <laughs> also I need to go and use the facilities. So, as they would say. <laughs> Okay, I'll see you in a little bit. It.
again, welcome back. We are at Camelford, waiting to get loaded. Gonna be at least probably three hours though, wait till we can start to be loaded. But at least I know that, so it's not the end of the world. At the end of the day, I'm getting paid, so <laughs> it's fine. No pressures. So yeah, the drive over was okay, aside from what I discussed earlier on in the first sequence. No, that did run, run me up the wrong way today, but I'm chilled out now, so. It's happened. I'm going to have a look at the dash cam in a bit, see if I've caught him. May have, may have not. It, sometimes it doesn't save and that's why I don't hold up for it. So I may even look at a new dash cam, just for these circumstances. So, uh we'll see on that front which actually is coming out of a SD card error so I might actually do that now I would do the truck walk around video now but as I said we're on the company site and uh, I don't want to film on the company site if you know what I mean because it's not what I've agreed with the boss not without their permission and it's not like it's a part of the site where you can get away with it you know it's we are literally in amongst it at the moment. I can get away with filming in the cab, fair enough. But, or filming of the site, no. It's our, yeah, I can tell it's a sensitive area. Um, but, this leads to another question. What do we do if we're waiting for three hours? Well, there's lots of things we can do as drivers. You can sit here and sulk about it, like... You know, oh, fair enough, it's a Friday, so a lot of drivers say would be a bit like that. But, it's not worth it in my book. Just chill. You know, watch a bit of YouTube as you're doing, you know. Search the web, do a bit of research or something. Do a bit of self-education. If I can reach it out. Go watch a film on the book, read a book on the iPad. You know, we'll do a bit of sketching because I sometimes have that's my new iPad, so that's my plan with that sort of thing. Is like in this circumstances, but I'll have nothing to do. I don't want to do YouTube or anything else. I can do a bit of drawing or something, you know. And I got that for, to help out with the channel, you know. I'm still testing out my laptop, I may get a slightly more modern one, but I'm something annoying because it's giving me a lot of money. To do, but I'm just weighing out is it worthwhile or not to change out to a better editing laptop, which will be beneficial, I hope you admit, and would uh, aid in getting the videos out, which is a good argument, but we'll have an um and ah about it. Um, I'm not recording the front, obviously I'm just recording inside for obvious reasons as I've already mentioned. That's oh, on the outside. Or oh, misting up then, I thought the AC was on. It's not that cold either, it's only about 13, 14 Celsius today. So, ah, it's not cold either, but it's not, you know, <laughs> baking out there either, which you may have seen on the way in. Bit wet today. Not bad, not as bad as it was a few weeks ago here. <laughs> this is one of my more favourite collections from here, doing this job. Even though it's a bit mundane for the channel, I hope it admit, because we only, as far as I'm aware of, we may go to some other places from here, but we mainly go between two different places. So if you're stuck doing this for a whole weekend a week, yeah, filming-wise you're a bit limited of Certainly on the daily, day, or not daily vlogs, but on the vlogging side, it's a bit of a struggle. No, I haven't been taking you here before, so it's something new for the channel. Either way. Um, what else to say? You know, I said, what do we do for three hours? I said, iPad it, listen to some music, use your phone if you got signal you know bring a book with you you know whatever keeps you entertained within reason you know even go to sleep for a bit if you want if you're 100 sure you're not going to be you know knocked on the door in one second like oh, a ready driver like now i know they don't have enough product so 
we've only got barely got half of what, what we need. We need a full load, so you know, I know I could get away with having a little laid out. You know, I might turn her off in a minute, but I don't want to do that because it might turn the camera off. So I'll do it once I finish this bit of the vlog. So I thought I'll film now. I know I've said I'll film when I'm leaving, but three hours from now, well, it's going to leave us for, oh, it's going to be near enough four hours probably. So one, two o'clock. Yeah, we're only going to get one delivery in today, I think. But it is what it is. So, anything else for the channel? So I'm looking outside because it's getting even worse weather-wise <laughs> at the moment. But hey, it could be worse, we could be outside. So anything else on the channel at the moment to report on? There's not a huge amount. I'll be going probably on a bike trip this weekend, so I'm going to try and aim to get this vlog edited out on the road if possible, so at least when I get home I can just set it to go upload straight away. More or less, hopefully. That's the idea. Um, do, 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 sorry about this, I should be a bit more organised with what we're covering. I said, you know, when you're waiting around, you just got to entertain yourself at the end of the day. You know, so it's all very well, just unless you want to sit down, it's fine, you know, but do beat yourself up. That's what I'm more trying to say if you hang to wait. It is what it is at the end of the day. Obviously, like this, I phoned the office up, told them that I'm going to be sat around at least three hours before they start loading me. So lets them know, like, he's going to be sat there for quite a long time. So if there is something they can do, or they can do it, or like now, just sit with it. You know, chill. You know, I'm glad I stopped off and grabbed my coffee, fueled the truck up. So I've been pretty efficient, really. And I didn't even know there was a hold up here, so... If I knew it was such a hold up, I would have probably left a bit later. But I suppose I could have phoned them up, but that may have not even answered the question either. Or it might have seemed like we had enough. We should have enough when I get here. But yeah, I'm sorry about early in the vlog about me having a go at a container driver. I'm not saying all container drivers are bad. And I don't say they deserve to be called container jockeys. But you can see why they're called container jockeys. and. It's those bad eggs that give you, give the rep. And it affects all those professional drivers, you know, because that car, that emergency stopped as well when you was approaching. You know, that that's going to leave them in a bad rep with truckers. They won't see any difference. They'll see it as a trucker. You know, I think, as I said, the car driver seems to be pretty uh, acknowledgement to myself, you know, thank you very much almost, like acknowledging myself, going, you know, you've done well there. So hopefully I may have re rebuilt some, you know, I should have gone on the horn or something, but I felt it would make no difference what he was doing. He was doing what he's doing no matter what. You could tell, you could read him. And sadly enough, those drivers are the ones who get involved in quite nasty accidents. And I bet they turn around and they wonder what happens. I wonder. <laughs> I really do wonder. You know, I would never have overtook on that, certainly on the A road, some carriageway A road like that. Let alone if you see an oncoming car. I mean, yes, if the oncoming car wasn't coming down, you might have said fair enough. And it was there when he pulled out. I saw it. But this is where planning comes in the difference between a professional and just a Muppet. A Muppet will only think. Five, five, ten metres, twenty metres ahead of them. You know, way rough ice. It's, you know, a professional will be looking as far as he can see and scanning. You know, reading what, how vehicles are behaving. So I was looking at him. He was at my back, which tells me. You know, he's obviously wanting to get past. It tells me, but also as a professional 
and he should be a professional driver. He's keeping no braking distance at all. If I have to slam on, he's had it. Same with that motorbike. You can read. You can read how traffic... And as I said, if you're a professional driver, you know what I'm talking about generally here. You know, you plan as far ahead as you can. You know, use combat indicators, like if you see movement behind bushes, if there's a blind bend. You know, anything you can use, use it. You know, to aid in, you know, how things are going to play out and what's best to do. You know, what speed should I be setting myself? You know, etc, etc, you know. And obviously with him, he, he wasn't planning that out far ahead, because I saw it. I saw it straight away, I was like, oh. <laughs> Not initially, but I did see the car when he pulled out like that, and he could have still gone back in. And gone, actually, no, <laughs> not a good idea. But no, he chose to truly, even though I would use speed, to try and land, get by quicker, and then obviously I was reducing speed more, then he had the car coming, so I was coming on, then he was forcing himself in obviously, because obviously he must have saw the car, I was slamming on at this stage, you know, full seatbelt tension on, everything, you know, warnings and dashment, systems kick kicking in, I mean the emergency systems on this truck are amazing, it only proves with that, but not what you want, that was not professional, it wasn't, it wasn't anywhere near professional what he did, it was a stupid, he was no worse than the motorbiker. He's driving it as if it was a sports car. That's probably the best way of describing his driving style. You know, he's a boy racer, in a truck. And that's what it was, sadly enough. And yes, I could speculate what it could be. I suspect it will be something like he's under pressure. He's got. He's, it's a Friday. He wants to be home tonight. He's trying to get a container, probably from Southampton, to a customer on this end of the country within a set amount of time. He knows it might take an hour or two to get tipped, and he's thinking all that, going, "Ooh, what about time?" And so I need to rush. I need to rush. And or he may have his dispatch in his neck. And this is no justification for what he did at all. I'm not seriously justifying him. All I'm just trying to say, uh, the lesson to learn out of this process is don't let the job drive you. It's so easy for the job to drive you in this game. It is, and it can get you down as well. It can, if you let it, it will. It will, and this is approaching the subject I'm thinking about doing, is to talk about the mental strain as professional drivers we have, you know, the rights and wrongs we have to decide between and, you know, the pressures of the job, you know, it's touching upon some of the negatives here, and maybe some positives, so I'll try and keep it positive, but it is, a f if certainly if you're a person looking at becoming a professional driver, it is an aspect of the game, depending where you go within the industry, but in general it will always have a degree of play, the mental game. It won't affect you straight away, but it's one of these things, if you're not aware of it and you're not prepared to deal with it, it can grind you down. And it can just make this job seem like hell, when actually it isn't. You know, that driver, like this morning, was the 1% of bad drivers in professional driving circles. It, you know, sadly, there is them in professional driving circles, you know. I would love to name and shame, but at the same time, as I said earlier, I'm not here to precisely name and shame, you know, within reason. You know, if it's on the vlog, it's caught on the vlog, tough luck. You know, you get caught on the vlog. <laughs> But so I wasn't filming at the time, I sold some dash cam, but the dash cam's only for proof and emergencies only, so not really to be used on the channel as such. Might use it in the future for relevant, you know, talking points, maybe. We'll see. But aside from that, if you have any input, any advice, I'm more than open to it. You know, I try to promote you know, calm professional driving at the end of the day. Get the job done. 
but get it done professionally you know don't be a a, a about it and you can probably imagine what I meant by hey I'm trying not to swear but don't be an idiot don't be a muppet about it in other words no, don't be the clown because you get away with it enough but it only take that one time that one time that you decide to do a reckless overtake or something like that you know won't be doing unprofessionally and you get caught out. Even the, the, the driver this morning very nearly got caught out. I mean, it was so close. It was, you know, left me in a little bit of a shake after it. You know, that's how, you know, it scares us as well as professional drivers and that, that stuff happens, you know, but we have to deal with it. But we'll touch upon that in another subject. I thought I'd just advertise it out now. It's something I'm looking at doing a video to discuss it. You know, discuss how I deal with it. Why I've witnessed some examples and stuff like that. So I'll speak to you, hope, probably, when we are loaded. In the Fiel style. So I'll see you then. Hello YouTube! Steve o Truck here. Welcome, well, not welcome back, but welcome back towards the end of the vlog. So it's been a long day, long day, if you can tell. We're going up, back along the A30, back towards Camelford. I thought I filmed a section, it's a reasonably nice section as well. And it's a nice enough evening, even though I've got my sunglasses on, because the sun rays are quite strong, as you may see on the camera. I don't know how it'll come out with all the, you know, youtube -y. But, uh, so as that, it's been more about what it was today. Six hours at, at our customer at Camelford, bake for a load. I was meant to get two loads today. I've only managed one and I should get back there. They're not going to have a load ready for today, except for about 10 o'clock, which I can't work then anyway. So, collect it in the morning. It is. So, we'll make our way over to the customer. I'm going to park on an airfield that's nearby you may know, if you know Camelford, it's a nice spot to park on as well, get some nice, get some nice shots of photography along there as well, so I might say I feel when they get parked up, DSLR is actually uh, on the bed, so I can actually maybe go and take some nice little snippets for the vlog, so I haven't got a thumbnail yet for her. Or not for her, for the vlog, shall I say? Let's keep an eye on the speed down this hill. It's a wee bit of a steep stick here to put this back off. Jobs are good in. As I was on the dramas this morning, it's actually been an okay day. You know, I just couldn't believe two dramas within an hour shot of each other. You know, you couldn't write it. Even if you tried, make hey, good, but <laughs> you won't believe you if it has to happen. But it is what it is. I'm going to say, I have a dig about my dash cam tonight, see if I can get the footage. And if I have got it, I'll probably hand it over to the police at the end of the day. Because that, that, what the back truck driver did earlier today is just completely unacceptable, unprofessional, completely. I mean, it's not an error. That wasn't a mistake. There's no way that was a mistake. You know, to have a to overtake with an oncoming car, I wouldn't be able to say how far away it was, but it was that far that you would not overtake in a heavy goods vehicle. Certainly not another heavy goods vehicle. You know, irrespective of how fast you may think you are, especially certainly a national speed limit, not a chance. You know, even somebody's passed the test may even be able to go. Nope, that's far too dangerous, so there's no justifications whatsoever what happened. But at the end of the day, if I know to the police, it's down to the police to make a decision on it. But at the end of the day, I doubt anything will happen. Unless, unless if the only thing that might, why I'm still going to hand it in, is if somebody else has reported it. Because there was a few people there who obviously fake cheesed off that as well. 
so uh, I wouldn't be surprised if something else has maybe reported it as well, so we'll see. So I'm not going to show on the channel for obvious reasons, if I'm going to pan it to the police it's down to them to make a call what happens, and when the call's made then if I show it, I'll show it if I've got the footage anyway, the first one if I haven't got the footage, oh, it is what it is I'm not going to hassle the police because at the end of the day I can't recall the, the registration number it was a white man truck and that's really all what I got contained a box body, you know, brown <laughs> I think it was but that's all I know <laughs> <laughs> Literally. I may recognise it if I see it, but may not because it's a very generic truck, you see. I don't want to stereotype anybody who drives or a man truck that's why you wear like that. I'm not, you know, saying, like, as soon as you see a man truck, pull them over. <laughs> no, I'm not. But it, you know, you can imagine I'm, I'm a bit peeved off is the word about what happened the water is underneath the bridge in, in general but as a professional driver I, 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 oh, me, I want to say this so I don't think I said this earlier in the vlog you know we all make mistakes you know, we all make mistakes I make mistakes I'm not a perfect driver oh, me, I'm not an angel myself but I'm not that bad by no means that, the bad level of this is off the charts you know he, he might as well, have, well you never know he may have stolen it but <laughs> you know how he's driving he might as well have stole it you know <laughs> you know <laughs> he had no due care and attention how he's driving you know he, he was just completely selfless selfish how he was and, you know, if you're a professional driver yourself and you see this, you know, you see this every so often, you'll come across a bad professional driver, commas, you know, <laughs> or so-called professional driver, yeah, every so often. And yeah, overall, the professional driver circle, in terms of truck drivers, is one of the better groups on the road in, t in general I mean there is a bit of you know debate you could say but in general compared to other road users we are you know overall better than most or all not all but you know the bulk of the many But, as I said, there's always some bad eggs in any group, in any community, and, you know, it's a shame. Because, as I was, I was actually discussing with a few of my family members today about it, because that's how much it shut me up. But, you know, if I was loaded, I would seriously be in the serious... I may even have been killed. You know, that I know that's the worst, absolute worst case that would have happened. At the very least, I would have been probably in hospital. If I was loaded, there was no way I would have been able to stop. No way. If I was loaded. There were barely a, an inch or so away, give or take, you know, and I was empty. So if I was loaded, I would definitely have gone in. And I can't try to recall if I was on the left of the road, but. Yeah, it is what it is. It's happened at the end there. If I don't have the footage, it's happened. Not much I can do about it. The only hopes why, if I do have the footage, I hand it over, and there is correlating evidence. Also, you know, from other parties, and it does get back to that driver. At the end of the day, I'd rather have that driver off the road or not being a professional driver at the end of the day because I know that type of driver will eventually semi-inevitably if he carries on driving like that get involved and sadly enough it, it's so easy to get involved in the way how he is driving in, in a way that would kill people or kill a person or many you know or at least they most injure people you know, and 
looked at as a good thing, as a real bad thing, and I, that's the reason why I feel like if I do have the footage, I do have to hand that over to the police. You know, because that's the reason, that's how I'm looking at it. I'm looking at further down the line, going, look, if I don't do anything, I know, yes, if it goes to the police and they say, oh, we can't do anything, well, at least I can say I've tried, I've, I've done, put my one penny in, you know. And that's how I look upon it. Yes, the chance of anything happening about it are slim, but if you don't try, you, nothing will ever get done, or nothing will ever get sorted. And yeah, as I said, you know, I'm not perfect, we all make mistakes, and I accept that people do make mistakes, and they buy the bullet, not a mistake, but overtaking like that, that was no mistake. At all, you know, thinking about what happened, you know, there's no doubt, and how he's acting before just correlated with what happened at the end day. I said he showed loads of combat indicators that he wasn't a vagrant driver, you know, he was up the chuff, or right up the back, you know, for many miles before that. There's no, I did contemplate pulling over to that guy, that's how close he was. But there was no suitable place for me to do so. I also had to outweigh if there was a lay-by. You know, I might, I'm might. i not very familiar with A35. You know, I need room for manoeuvre. He's right up behind me. I don't have room for manoeuvre. I'm not going to break the speed limit. You know, and some may say, oh, just a lick of it, which, fair enough. But the problem is with these types of drivers, a little bit then becomes more until you hit you did 56 which is my limit anyway and and that's the question where do you draw a line i will more than you say I, I've done all things right I've, I've stuck to the book as best I could I've also taken emergency evasion whatever means you know I know yes the arm yes I'm, I understand it if you can go and look at the grey area do it you know get out of the way but there was no option beforehand. Otherwise, as I said, I would have done that. This would have probably never happened, or I wouldn't have appreciated how bad drive that was. But never mind, I'll leave that bit of the debate there. That I've gone on more than enough about that driver. You know, he's got a lot of airtime. <laughs> Lots of airtime on the channel. But, as I said, this gets it across, you know, and, it's not all fuzzy and all living the dream in this job. It, you know, you do have to deal with situations sometimes. And it, as a tramper, because I'm away from home all week, you know, I don't get to go and speak with friends, family, one-on-one -on -one every single day of the week. I don't have that luxury. I can phone them up, or as I did, and sort of chat it through, you know, which is the next be best thing. And it's my, more my outputs I use. And as I said, was saying early in this vlog, you know, it's just making ways of dealing with stress because it is part of the stress. You know, it, it, that was stress and it is stress. It was distress at the time and it's stress afterwards because you're thinking about the consequences. You know, what may have could have happened. I know, yes, that's silly, but you know, you're kind of thanking your lucky stars, going, you know, phew. Only, you know, that driver said that driver has no idea how close. If I was loaded, you have no one, not one idea right now. He's probably home right now. How close he was to being in the very major accident. I mean, not necessarily him physically, but you know, involving people with his wagon because of his actions. It's just not cool for. So yeah, I'm. I want to go back and say thank you very much to all my new subscribers. It, you know, it it, it amazed me with you know how fast the channel has grown over the last week or so. I know yes, some it's probably because of Truck Fest. But 
Nevertheless, no matter why you joined the way you found me, thank you very much. It is appreciated. Also, pass on to friends and family who might know that be interested in watching, you know, trucking content, you know. Also, feel free to go and check, check out, I've forgotten to add this into my truck fest one, but go and check out if you haven't, you probably am, are subscribed to this YouTuber, but seriously, go and check out Scott Andrews. I'll try and remember to put his link in my channel down below. Because we had a quick chat at Truck Fest as well. So, uh, <laughs> you know, I thought just give him a quick shout out at the end of the day. If you haven't checked his channel out, seriously, he's a really good YouTuber. You know, all I, all I say is all the best in the future, and he's just going to grow and grow. He's, I have many favourites, but he is amongst my top favourites of truck vlogging. And I see him becoming, you know, one of the big YouTubers in the trucking circles. You know, uh, yeah, I wish him all the best at the end of the day. It's not a competition at the end of the day as well either. I do support the best in the way legends. I have full respect for all of them. Also, Trukachenko, you know, he's another one who's blown me away over the last year or so. I mean, he's really good at what he does. And for a driver who's come back to driving, you know, my hat, hat's off to him, you know, full respect. And yeah, I wish him all the best in his new job as well. So go and check out his channel as well, and all the best of the road legends as well. And also go and check out uh, the other vloggers as well. Now, I'm not going to name every single one, but I thought to do the generic ones and cover Scott, because I said we had a chat at Truck Fest. Nothing funny, just like house things, you know, just a general, you know, nothing exciting, but, you know, I was more blown away, to be honest, and more in shock. It's probably the word. <laughs> it's funny, I was uh, probably starstruck. It's probably the word. Ooh, what's going on there? I'm not far from my junction, so it's not messing around too much as a slow truck ahead, which has caused a bit of build up. Let's put us into power mode. You know, empty. She's a little bit chilled out in hills at times. Not necessarily a bad thing, but it's just safe to be aware of. And yeah, going over the line, it goes off. So, as I said, I thought I'd add that in there. I might reiterate it in another vlog because it's something I, I've just realised I did mention in, in the Truck Fest video, and it deserves a mint. Well, not it, he deserves a mention as they would say. So yet again, if you liked what you've seen, please hit that big red subscribe button. And if you want to see future content, just slam that bell button, just ding it, just hit it. You know, just give it a good old ding. <laughs> so I'm getting a bit mental, aren't I? And uh, also feel free to comment down below. Every comment is blow me away, you know, I've checked out, uh, I've forgotten his name, he commented on my uh, Truck Fest video, he d he's a, seems to be a very big truck fan, he does a lot of vlogging in terms of filming of trucks, if you like that sort of thing, please go and check out his channel, I do apologise, I can't recall his name right now, poor planning, I will either add it into this video if I remember to do so, or... I'll just add it in down below, or if I haven't, just comment down below, say, provide that guy's details, you know, or just go and check out my Truck Fest video, 2019, ship Southwest, and he'll be in the comments down below. He's basically said, now I'll sub to your channel, I've done a video on Truck Fest, you know, go and check out, it, it was actually pretty good, very good, well put together. So please go and check his channel out as well. 
Um, anything else on the logs and things to do, uh, info to update you? I said this is going to be the end of today's vlog. All I'm going to be doing is going to be parking up on the airfield at Camelford. I don't know if I'll do anything then, so I'll do the outro now. So we're all good. So it's been a bit of a bland video today. Uh, aside from me from the news of the trucker and all that. That's the exciting bit if you <laughs> if you like hearing about that sort of thing. I don't. But, you know, it, it just highlights some of the stuff I said that we have to deal with. And I'll leave it at that. So yet again, a thank you ma oh yes again thank you for watching and a massive thank you at that you know for all the support even if you haven't subscribed thank you very much for watching the video as they would say in a certain advert every little helps as they would say and yet again if you haven't subscribed please hit that big red subscribe button it would be seriously appreciated and yet again to all my subs and commenters thank you very much for supporting the channel you know it from my heart seriously it it blows me away you know the amount I said the amount of subs I've got I know I'm going on here I'm aware but I need to say what I'm saying the, I said the amount of subs I've had over the last week or so you know it's it's blown me away. I know, as I said, Roy probably is fun, but yet, yet again, it, it, it amazes me. I'm just blown away. You know, and I know it's a small amount when you compare it to the big YouTubers. It's nothing, but to me, it's it blows me away. It, it, it's it, it's special. It, one of the reasons why I do this channel is to entertain, inform. You know, hopefully entertain. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll abide it at you at there before I go on any more. So yet again, thank you very much. I will see you. Yep, there's a truck saying goodbye. I'll see you in the next one. Over. Watching the stars and the city lights Right from the start said we never grow apart till Wichita You wanted me to know, never ever let you go till Wichita Surrounded by colors, it's such a sight Watching all the lovers fall into the night Stars in the sea